Hello everyone, um, Eve Ellie here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video I will be focusing on the new moon in Scorpio occurring on November 7th, 2018. The numerology around this is an 11, 7, 11. The number seven is all about the spiritual pathway and embodies messages coming to us directly from our soul, our guides and angels, and directly from Source Creator. A very strong spiritual divine energy is embedded within this new moon. Now when we add all the numbers together, 11, 7, and 11, the final number is an 11, a 29 slash 11. Therefore, the energy of change, I often find 11 is bringing us change, very deep-seated and profound change. The one on its own is always about change and new beginnings, but when we have it together within the energy of the master number that an 11 is, it's taking that to the next level of transformation and change. And within it, of course, is the energy of creation and manifestation as well. Now, I'd like to jump in to talking about what this Scorpio energy is bringing to us. It is the new moon in Scorpio. However, we have had several different planets already moving through the energy of Scorpio. We had Jupiter enter Scorpio last October. I think it was late September, October of 2017. It is now leaving the sign of Scorpio on November 8th and moving into Sagittarius. It set the background stage for this energy that's now occurring. And we have the sun in Scorpio. We had Venus in Scorpio. We had Mercury in Scorpio. All of this Scorpio energy with the faster moving planets, Venus, Mercury, and the sun began back in September with Venus entering Scorpio. And by the time we fully exit the Scorpio energy, it will be January 4th, 5th, and 6th of 2019. We are getting four full months to deeply embody and experience this. Therefore, the new moon is taking us to a whole nother level here. With Venus presently retrograde and Mercury in its pre-shadow, it goes retrograde from November 16th, the day that Venus comes out of retrograde, moving direct, Mercury will be going retrograde and coming out of that on December 6th. This is about unveiling the cellular memory for release, healing, and integration within our very essence and being. That's what this entire year, starting back in the fall of 2017, has been preparing us for. Once Venus goes direct, followed by Mercury in December, we will be able to more consciously, fully assimilate this process and expand upon it. There is an expansion of our very nature and self that is occurring by the end of this, this year and by the end of the first week in January. Venus actually exiting retrograde is in a way the first formation of us coming above ground because we have been beneath the ground <laughs> For a number of months now, we've been going through the shadow self and the shadow parts, looking at what is hidden here. Scorpio is asking us 
and not, not even asking us. It is pushing us very deep into our unconscious and our psyche to bring out the things, the parts of us that have not been integrated, that have not been healed, that have literally been either deeply buried or we've placed outside of ourselves and that show up then in the projection from other people around us. Why? Because we were not ready to face it on our own. Therefore, people in our lives have been there as that mirror to us, to show us what we have been in denial of. Scorpio denies nothing. When the waters are deep, it gets on its scuba equipment or its snorkel. Okay. I was watching Supergirl last night, one of my favorite programs, and I was left with a sense of what this energy is about. There was a very, very good description of what we are doing right now. And this was in a dialogue between Lena Luther and Brainiac, where he is normally a very logical, rational being. And of course, he's a male. And she is also embodies the masculine. However, she's a very creative, innovative female. And he didn't know how to deal with these feelings that were surfacing because he wasn't used to it. And she told him what he would need to do so that he could go back to being in his rational mind. She told him he, would, he needed to take every one of these emotions that was coming up and put each one of them in their own separate box and then take each one of those boxes and bury them deep, as deep as you possibly can into your psyche. And that stuck with me because right now under this Scorpio umbrella, we are actually taking these little boxes out and we are opening them and we are cutting them up and we're throwing them away. Because all of these emotions that we have buried are repressed, parts of ourselves that we've denied, parts of ourselves that we've forgotten about, that we need to now recognize. And mind you, at the time that we place these emotions into boxes, there was a reason for it. Maybe we were trying to survive. It was a survival mechanism. Perhaps there was some trauma that you were going through, and this was your way of coping with it. These boxes were created in the early stages of our life. They were also boxes, though, that we brought with us from other lifetimes. Why? or other existences that our soul has been on because our essence, our body, the cells recognize no time. Therefore, we are indeed unveiling and unwrapping our cellular memory so that we can integrate what needs to be integrated and heal what has finally been calling on to us for so long to be recognized and healed. This is the journey we are on right now. Please go gently on it. Don't jump in and think you're going to unveil every box at once. Take one at a time. This is an immense, most beautiful journey into the emotional body, the emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental. It's all of it together. Why? Because we are at that place in our own personal individual evolution and on the collective evolution where it's time to now expand and to grow. And to do that, we have to move into a greater place of self-mastery. Okay, so that's what this Scorpio new moon has in store for us. And I think it's very interesting on her, 
her journey here you know the moon is going to be definitely helped by the sun in Scorpio she's being helped by Pluto in Capricorn she's already had the energy of Saturn in Capricorn pushing her through this to letting her know it's time to do the work and we have to go deeper now and Neptune is helping her as well so we're accessing all the parts of our being or I should say any part of our being that we've shut off and maybe even parts of our being and our, our higher mind that we have not tapped into before or we've tapped into only very on a very limited fashion here okay so we're tapping into things areas of our very essence and psyche that's the word that keeps coming up for me that is taking us into unknown territory and yet that territory is who we really are so it's not unknown to our soul it's simply unknown to our personality and so for this I decided it was time to get out my tarot deck my mythical tarot deck and I also decided to get out my medicine cards my animal cards these were the two decks that I first started doing my own personal readings on and learnings probably 20 22 23 years ago so it's a very old deck and I've already pulled some cards here and I wanted to get an overview of the energy and it's very interesting because I'm already getting a message here that what we're looking at is a further integration or union of our masculine side and our feminine side but I'm getting different messages for each so the overview the first one I got was the Knight of Wands which is fire energy and the Knight of Wands is the younger version of the masculine energy the masculine energy in his 20s or 30s early 30s I would say but more yeah mid to late 20s early 30s but it's that exuberance that taking life by the horns and wanting life to be an adventure exciting and and having a lot of optimism on the journey it is an action energy it's very fiery but it can also be impetuous spontaneous and get bored easily okay so it's not an energy that necessarily stays however for this reading what I'm getting yeah okay very very interesting what I'm getting is inspiration the Knight of Wands is inspiring you to be positive and optimistic about your life and also be creative this is the torch of your being of your spiritual body light that torch and follow it okay the other message I got was the strength card which is one of the major arcana and this is the myth of Hercules in a in a duel a, a struggle with the lion and it's one where he goes in without any weapons of any type he uses his brutal strength but the ingenuity of his strength this is Hercules using his strength in a wise way there are many messages here this is the masculine part of ourselves embodying both the beast within us as well as our higher parts so it's the physical and the mental and that part of us that that we still feel we need to gain greater control over but understand the beast in this card is the lion and so what I see here is the right use of will the right use of leadership it's the masculine part of us coming in to a place where we feel like we can get into greater control of our life where we can be the king 
on the throne, so to speak. We are now in control of our lives. We have more mastery here. Or we're in the process of working towards that goal. This is also an embodiment of the inner courage, that it takes courage on this pathway of self-mastery. And it requires us mastering our ego and mastering our pride, okay? So there we have, so far, a masculine energy with the Knight of Wands and the Strength card. And the third card is the Queen of Cups. So now we have the Divine Feminine part of ourselves showing up. Ah, that's Helen of Troy. She was considered the most beautiful woman in the world, in the Greco-Roman world. Yet, she was a representation of the feminine at that time that every man yearned for, but felt was inaccessible. She remained, in essence, a mystery. Yet, it's that part of the masculine within us that yearns for the mystery that the divine feminine within us is bringing forth. And the Queen of Cups is the embodiment of our emotional bodies. And as a queen, she is in mastery of her emotions. Her emotions are not running her anymore. Okay? See, they're below her feet as she holds the cup. She drinks from them, but she does not allow her emotions to rule her or to overwhelm her. She listens to them. She's following her deep intuitive guidance here. I really, really like that message. So the divine feminine part of us is coming to a deeper understanding and unification of our emotional being while the masculine part is coming to terms with his inspiration, his impetuousness, his adventure side, his wanting to take risks, and while at the same time embodying courage and mastery of ego and pride. Okay, A lot of very powerful messages embedded there. Now, I did do a spread asking about the focus of this new moon. And we're back to the masculine. I got the emperor holding the world in his hands. He has reached that place where he knows who he, who he is and what he wants. And again, we have the, the visual of the throne here, which we had with the queen of cups. We're getting a lot of thrones, as I'm seeing here so far. And the throne is a representation of that sovereignty and that self-mastery that this entire cycle is bringing to us. And remember, this is taking us through the year into January. And I'm being guided that it's going to take us through a good portion of 2019. Okay, So there is a theme here that we're embodying now. And this new moon in Scorpio is a very significant push deeper into this theme, okay? And the other thing is the king has on his shoulder the eagle, the wisdom, flying high above one's life and gaining a deeper perspective. As an emperor, he needs to guide and lead not only by example, but through a place of wisdom, through gaining a much deeper perspective of the world so that he can guide himself and the people around him, be that mentor for the people around him from a place of inner experience. I really like that message. That's the focus. And then what is supporting this journey is the King of Swords. And we have a third throne here. Wow. Boy, I'm getting the, the message of sovereignty and self-mastery over and over again here. Okay, yeah. And this is the King of Swords. So now we're getting um, the air element. And remember, we had the Knight of Wands, so we had the fire. 
and the strength card had has a measure of fire and earth energy to it. Therefore, we're getting all the fire signs here, some of the earth signs, and all of the air signs. Now, the king of swords is all about the intellect, thinking from the higher mind here, because it's the king. He's not the impetuous page of swords or knight of swords. He's the king now. He's again learned through his endeavors and his trials and tribulations. He's come to a place of inner balance because there in his hand, in one hand, he's carrying the sword of truth and wisdom. And in the other, he's carrying the scales of balance, which is about learning that discernment, that balance of the high mind versus the low mind of ethics and morals and what is right, what is the right path to follow here. This is about divine law. And the sword is there to cut away the belief systems and the negative thoughts that are keeping you trapped in your lower mind. Ah, we're going back to the strength card. The lion, or at least in this case, the beast representing the lower faculties of our humanness and Hercules who is the hero representing our higher faculties. Okay, so what is helping us on this journey is our ability to cut away what we know is not healthy for us, whether these are thoughts, beliefs, or stories that we are embedded within. The actions that we are meant to be taking right now is the Empress. We get the female energy back again. And the Empress is a very earthy energy. So we have all the earth signs now. All the elements are here with us. And she's pregnant with new ideas and new beginnings, pregnant with creativity. Um, I'm getting something about the seasons here. The Emperor and the King of Swords were showing us the season of winter. Okay, which is what we're moving into. And as we're going into the end of fall and winter with Venus and Mercury then retrograde, there's going to be a lot of internal work that we are doing almost until the middle of December as we go into Christmas and New Year's. We're very much on an internal journey of finding our inner truth here, okay? Now, the Empress is an embodiment of, I would say, autumn and spring, okay? So those are the seasons that are coming up here that maybe you've been building in the autumn towards what you're actually going to bring forth in the spring or the summer of 2019, okay? But she is ripe with all of these new possibilities. And she's asking you to work with your physical body. So we're not only working with the emotional and the mental body here, we're working with the physical. And remember in the beginning, the Knight of, of Wands carrying the torch, that's our spiritual body. We have therefore all four of our bodies here that we are working with in tandem. And that's noticing what is your physical body telling you here? And the Empress is about embodying your abundance and working towards financial well-being, well-being in your career and your pathway and coming up with wonderful, beautiful, creative ideas to further your career, your life mission, and to create the abundance, the family, the marriage, whatever it is you want to create. And you know, the Empress can be a significator of pregnancy, people wanting to get pregnant or who are pregnant and maybe giving birth at the end of this year or next. What are we moving into? So these are the outcome cards, the last two I picked here from the Mythic Tarot, and I get the Nine of Cups. You know, what's so interesting here is 
all the cards we've gotten are either Major Arcana or Nine of Cups, Knight of Wands, Kings and Queens. That means that we are reaching the end of our journey. We are at the latter part of it. We are more than far more than halfway through here. The Nine of Cups is the reunion. It's the reconciliation. Psyche has been brought back from the underworld to reunite with Cupid or Eros. Yes, and that's Aphrodite here, raising her cup of blessing to bless the union of Psyche and Eros. This is the union of the masculine and the feminine. And the Nine of Cups is the number of completion. We are completing this journey coming into union within ourselves so that we can then also come into union with one another, with our sacred beloveds, whoever that happens to be, whether you've met them yet or not. This is a beautiful card of fruition. Okay. Now, the one thing I want to say about it, though, is if you look at it, the season I'm seeing here is spring or summer. And that's why I'm going to let you guys know, please have patience. Whenever the strength card comes up, and also the empress, by the way, because those have earth energies embodied in them, one of the messages is patience. You're growing into this. It may not yet be here. Okay? For some, I'm seeing it coming by the time we get to the winter solstice for others the end of you know sometime in the winter season and then we also have spring and summer so all the seasons are being embodied here okay for this true love union and uh, re or reconciliation and the final card i got next to that is the wheel of fortune now in the mythic tarot we have the cave again and these are the three fates or the three mysteries. And in ancient Greco-Roman mythologies, they embodied the divine energy that was going on beneath everything. And it was so powerful, the fates were more powerful than the gods of Olympus. Even Zeus had to bow down to the fates. And the fates are a representation of our line of destiny, which in astrology is the North Node and the South Node, as well as certain other planets like Saturn. Okay, But particularly the nodes of the moon represent our destiny. And I would put Saturn in there as well. And that we are governed by that destiny to a certain degree. But what I'm getting with this is we are in a time of hibernation right now where we're going, we are going within, we're in the cave. We've been in there already for a couple of months and we are looking at what it is we truly want to manifest. This is a spiritual message here because it's telling you that you are accessing your divine nature, your soul, your spirit, and that your destiny is what is unfolding now. And, f and I'm getting a message with the Wheel of Fortune this time. Yeah, that we are leaving the karmic wheel. We're leaving the karmic pathway behind now. We are exiting it to a certain degree as much as can be, can be done. And we are bringing in a new pathway. That's what I'm getting with this. Endings and new beginnings. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, on the Wheel of Fortune, you get to decide, too. There's four different men there or humans on that wheel. Where are you on that wheel? Are you on top of the world or are you, are you on the bottom of the world? Are you? And this is, okay, they're telling me, this is about the, the south, the north, the east, and the west. So where are you? And where are you on the earth? Are you in the northern hemisphere, the southern, the western, or the eastern. All of our fortunes are coming into being now. 
what we have sown, we shall now reap. And think about that, the Empress and the Wheel of Fortune, because the Empress is absolutely about harvest time. We are going to reap what we have sown through this life and through others. That's what's coming into being. I went ahead and pulled out some of the animal cards. So let's see what animal is guiding the overview here. And I have frog medicine. It's a water element. It's all about cleansing and purification, shedding the tears, using the water element to purify. We are going through a very deep cleansing here. I love the frog medicine. It's also asking, asking you to be very gentle with yourself on this journey. You may be going through you know, the winter seat, the autumn and the winter season, we often get the sniffles or we get that slight tickle in our throat. We start feeling different. So be very gentle with yourself and allow your body to purify. It might be a wonderful time to do some very, very gentle cleansing. Okay. What other messages do the animals have for us? We get bear medicine, which is the sacred feminine. And isn't that funny? In Native American medicine, bears about hibernation, caving, going into your woman cave or your man cave. This is the time to hibernate and go deep within our being, where we merge our conscious with our unconscious and subconscious. I'm thinking, remember I, I brought up the, the message of the, our psyche, and we had the Nine of Cups, the myth of psyche and eros as our destination very beautiful energy well us going deep within and seeking out our inner truth is what is going to get us where we want to go okay so listen to that inner wisdom that in that intuition and bear medicine is earth energy it goes with the empress card so we have so far in the animal medicine, the water energy and the earth. Aha, uh -huh, now we got the air, the owl, divine wisdom. The owl is akin to the eagle sitting on the emperor's shoulder. We have had so many different experiences in our lives now, our many lives, the soul journey that we've been on for a long time. That wisdom lives inside of us. It's time to fully access that wisdom. And the owl is also about discernment. Be discerning with your boundaries and your time. Recognize what works for you and what doesn't. What is your truth and what is not your truth. The owl also has an uncanny ability to see straight through illusion it is the breaker of illusion. And the one thing I forgot to mention about this journey into Scorpio is in unveiling our truth, we are breaking through all of the illusions that we have carried. Okay? And the owl is the medicine to call upon on this journey. And the last card we have is the grouse. I love it. The grouse is this dancing the spiritual dance. So we have a spiritual, the spiritual energy here. But it also is telling us that everything is being guided by our own divinity and source creator. And all of our divine guides, the whole network of our soul group is guiding this journey to really connect in with your spiritual guidance and to dance that spiritual dance because the grouse is the animal medicine of joy. Oh my goodness, that's it. We are bringing in bliss. Grouse is the medicine of bliss. And bliss comes from that unification and that further expansion and access and living through our soul, our truth.
beautiful messages. And I wanted to end this reading with picking two cards from the divination of the ancients. And I got the numerology. We are meant to really recognize and notice the codes that we're being given right now. These are all codes of activation. 111, 444, 999, 101, 000, threes, sixes. These are all codes of activation. They may mean, may mean one thing to one person and something different to somebody else. We are not all seeing the same number sequences. Become aware and write down what sequences you are seeing. And the message is precision. Precision means stay very focused on your journey here. Do not allow other people to pull you off your mission. Okay, they're telling me this is just another instance of showing you that your mission is accessing and working with your inner truth. And I'm getting a message around money to an abundance. Yeah, and we've, we're getting that. You know, with Scorpio energy, it is about looking at our financial well-being, our possessions. What do we own? What are our, our resources? And with the numerology card, we are being asked to really focus a little bit on our financial world, to manage it better if it needs some extra managing. And to, I'm getting an also another message here too, to declutter, get rid of the things you don't need anymore. Okay, yes. Minimize, that's what they're telling me. Get rid of the things you do not need, whether they're material, mental, emotional, and other. So some of us may be minimizing the people we hang out with too. Why? Because we're not on the same pathway at this time, and that's okay. Uh, with the, this card, I'm also feeling the energy of needing to go within to spend a lot of time with yourself right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the last card I got was smoke, prayers, patience, patience, guys and gals. I always bring up guys and gals. I don't know why. I think <laughs> I'm getting these tickets to see... Um, the play, I think it's called Guys and Dolls for my dad when he comes to visit. So my mind has been kind of around that energy lately. Smoke and prayers. Your prayers are being answered. They've already been heard. They are being answered. Please have faith in that and understand that it takes time for prayers to materialize. It has to burn the old away so that the new can we be reborn. That's why it takes time. And for some, this has been a journey of months, and I'm, I'm picking up for many of us, it has been, been a journey of many, many years. Or finally, the prayers are being answered. They're coming into fruition as we end 2018, but in particular in 2019 is what I'm getting. Okay? So be patient with this process and continue to have faith. There is so much going on in the invisible world behind you. So many things that have to come in to perfection so that all of the things that you want come into being. And the last thing I want to say about this is when you're doing your prayers, again, they're giving me that message. It's been coming through for months now. You're going to get what you asked for or something even better. I love you all. Until next time. And if you want to get further information about the astrology and the numerology, um, jump onto my website, eveelly.com. I have up there for purchase my recent lecture where I go into these energies, both into the sacred numerology and the astrology. And I also have a very wonderful meditation that in my opinion, I think is the best I have done so far. 
Okay, and I called it holy purification. I'm going to be doing my own meditations because they are so powerful. And if you want to deepen this process for yourself, I recommend that you meditate on your own There's or get YouTube meditations. There's many out there for free. I have two of them on my YouTube channel that are free. Um, if you do want to dive deeper, though, look on my webpage. They're all on there for $16, pretty much. And yeah, okay, so there's my little marketing thing at the end. I'm trying to do better with that. I'm, it's not my go-to, okay? I love all of you. Until next time.